Hello, this is Andy Ford Video, and we're going to look at Dehancer. It's available for your editing tools as well as After Effects. This comprehensive film emulation tool follows the science of analog filmmaking techniques, building profiles from real analog samples combined with nonlinear image processing and mathematical modeling. In short, it's a very complex effect, and you can spend a lot of time playing around with it. I'll be showing you just a brief overview of what it can do. I have some clips from Envato Elements, but the footage on the timeline we can apply to the Hanser effect, which is found under Film Emulation. Once you can apply it, you can see an immediate difference. If you look under our Input tab, your source will probably be Rec. 709. You most likely won't need any major global adjustments, but know that you can do that here. For example, you could bring some warm tones back, but you have so many other options that you may not need to touch this now. Now under the Film tab, you can choose a film profile. As you can see, there are a lot to choose from, and they do make a difference. For example, you can see the difference that Fuji Color 100 made versus my Kodak Vision 3 setting. You can also adjust the push and pull parameter as needed for exposure control. As you lighten or darken the image here, realistic color and contrast changes occur. This change is augmented by the film profile you select. Now in some cases, you'll have certain source characteristics or conditions that affect your overall look. The Film Developer tab can help, and while this example footage doesn't really need such tweaks, we'll use it for example purposes. You have a contrast boost parameter that emulates the analog contrast development process. Gamma correction and color separation will only have an effect if contrast boost is not set to zero. While color separation affects most saturated colors, color boost alters overall saturation. The Film Compression tab emulates the compressed tonal range of film and allows redistribution of the highlights toward the midtones. Now shadows are not affected. Raising the impact value compresses the highlights toward the midtones. The white point controls the position of the white point within the luminance range. The tonal range parameter adjusts how the width of tonal range is affected, going from no compression to having the highlights and shadows completely affected by compression. Finally, there's the color density parameter, which controls color intensity, going from low highlight saturation to high saturation. Now the expand tool works to adjust the profile rather than correct the results of the selected profile. The black and white point parameters may have you thinking it functions similarly to the levels effect, but these expand adjustments are contrast attributes of the film profile itself. Therefore, it achieves smoothness and isn't clipped by any post actions performed. With print, you can adjust values and ranges that act like real analog media, such as exposure, tonal contrast, color density, and saturation. Tonal contrast uses nonlinear compression to either soften or punch up an image. If clipping occurs, adjust your expand white-black points as needed. All the print values work in the digital contrast range, but by enabling the analog range limiter, you can get a softer image with improved detail in shadows and highlights. The options under Color Head are used for creative correction. You should be familiar with most of these. Now Film Grain adds realistic film grain simulation. Adjust the size, amount, and impact with respect to the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Halation occurs around bright lights, usually as an orangey-red in overexposed areas. The source limiter adjusts the brightness of the light source. A lower dim setting allows for more halation. A high background gain allows it to appear on most backgrounds. Smoothness makes halos appear softer. Local diffusion adjusts light spread from the edge, affecting halo size, while global diffusion can help with warming skin tones. Amplify strengthens the effect and orange coloration. And hue essentially helps adjust the halo from reddish to orangish. Blue compensation reduces the influence that a cool background has on seeing halation. Finally, impact acts like an opacity control on the effect. Now, blue mimics the vintage lens look of bright light dispersion on the edges of contrasting areas that is distorted and amplified. The highlight setting controls the threshold of what is in the tonal range of highlights. Details determines the effect seen on certain size objects, and diffusion controls the radius of the effect along its boundary. The vignette tool performs a realistic effect by working off the exposure information from the source image, but applying itself at the printing stage. Now, film breath and gate weave. Film breath mimics the natural blips you see in film with changes in contrast, color, or exposure. The period sets how many frames have a variation. Other settings determine the amount of change. Probably too difficult for you to see on this clip. Gateweave mimics the swinging motion of a film when being run for a projector. These slight movements can be added by adjusting the period amount and angle of motion. And the final option we'll review is false color. This option helps you get a quick idea of the exposure or lighting distribution of your image.
So as you can see with tons of options and film profiles, you can spend a long time perfecting your film-like look, but the Hanter tool is really in-depth and you're sure to enjoy it if you're going for this look. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Hanser. Thank you.